mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken, called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come, shall not keep silence. The fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself, Salah. Hear, O my people, I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifice or thy burnt offerings to have, to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock up out of thy, out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. Thou shalt glorify me. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Almighty God, Father, we welcome you into our midst this morning, Lord. You said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. So, Father, we welcome you, Lord. We have been anticipating this moment, Lord, where you will come down and speak to our hearts this morning. We have been anticipating, Lord, your presence amongst us, Lord. So we ask, O oh God, that you rain down and refill our vessels, Father. Father, we have need of you, and we have need of more of you, Lord. May we have a continual dying daily to ourselves that you may reign in our hearts and in our lives. If there be one here, O oh God, that hasn't received you, Lord, as their Savior, Lord, may you bless them indeed, Lord. May you fill their vessel with the Holy Ghost, that we all may walk, Lord, in unity, having a perfect relationship with you. Father, bless your people as we have gathered together. Bless our brother as he brings the message this morning. Help him to get himself out of the way that he may be used of you, Lord, to speak to our hearts. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on. the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of his servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. So the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on clouds, shining like the sun at the drop is call. So lift your voice, hear of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. These are the days Coming as fresh. These are the days of his servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are all white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard. Depending the word.
God like Jehovah. There's no God. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. Let's check it out. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. Had to drop his call, so lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. like our God. Hallelujah. I just feel like praising him this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm alive to glorify, I'll praise his name. Oh, praise his name. As long as I'm alive to glorify, I'll praise his name. Well, ain't no tree gonna clap in my place. As long as I'm alive to glorify, I'll praise his name. Well, ain't no tree gonna clap in my Cause I'm alive to glorify Praise the Lord Oh, praise His name As long as I'm alive to glorify Praise the Lord Oh, praise His name As long as I'm alive to glorify I'll praise His name Well, ain't no bird Gonna sing in my as long as I'm alive to glorify, I'll praise his name. Well, ain't no bird gonna sing in my praise. As long as I'm alive to glorify, say praise the Lord. Oh, praise him. As long as I'm alive to glorify. I'm alive. Yeah. Well, ain't no rock gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive to glorify, I'll praise his name. Well, ain't no rock gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive to glorify, say praise. Cause I'm alive to glorify Say praise the Lord Oh, praise his name As long as I'm alive Say praise the Lord Oh, praise him Praise him Alive to glorify Say praise I'm alive to glorify our 
praise his name. praise him with all my might all the days of my life he's been too good to me hallelujah Go! 
Unstoppable's hey. Unstoppable's hey. That's what you are. That's what you are. You are God. See, you are God.
authority. God commands the devil to set your loved ones free. The third pull is in the hill now. It can't be imitated. The power that's in the bride, it can't
to see my sins hanging on the cross. Hey, I'll never know how much it costs to see. So you came and changed my life, and you thought I was worth keeping. Thank you, Jesus. So you cleaned me up inside, and you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, and I could be whole, and I could tell everyone I know. So you thought. Yes, you did. Hey, so you came and changed my life, and you thought I was worth keeping. Oh, my. Oh, so you cleaned me up inside, and you thought I was to die for. Oh, you sacrificed your life. Hey, now I am free, and now I am whole, and I can tell. God is God. You 
become personal to you. Amen. He's here to redeem us all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Jack. Amen. It's not very often that you can get your pastor to sing a special. But I'm so glad he did. God bless you. Amen. Somebody asked me what time, who's your favorite singers? I said, Fred Hammond, Brother Jack. <laughs> Lord, he's up there. But we got so many saints in this church. That's just the men's side. I get on the, the women's side. It's all sisters up in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We, we, God has blessed us with so much, so many gifts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We like to uh, say God bless you to each one of you. Amen. We want to welcome Sister Colleen Kelly. Colleen Kelly. God bless you. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Precious brother Brian Funderburg. God bless you. It's good to have you here, my brother. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. There's no better place to be outside of glory than the house of the Lord in his presence. Amen. If we don't have any written requests, so we'll just continue to pray for one another. Keep each other in your prayers daily. I know that everybody in here is going through. If you're not going through, I will question your Christianity. That means you're on the devil's side. Amen. So you know that your brother and sister next to you is going through, so keep them in prayer always. God bless you. We want to pray for Brother Trevor this morning as he prepares to bring the message. Amen. Sister, can you give me the announcements? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. We have communion and foot washing tonight at 530. We're going to have sister's prayer Tuesday at 730 be no service this Friday. Um, this weekend, uh, I guess uh, at the House of Fellowship in Sarasota, Brother Danny Steeman will have his meetings. That'll be Friday at 7 p.m., Saturday at, at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Sunday at 11 a.m. And we have the Spirit and Truth Banquet and Services. The banquet will be Friday, February 14th. Uh, you can register online service Saturday, February 15th from 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, February 16th 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. God bless you, brothers. Will you come this morning? We'll take up this morning's time of offering. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for just meeting us here in this place this morning.
sing. I am your redeemer, the beginning and the end. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am Jehovah. I am the King. I am Messiah. you just turn and greet somebody and say so God, God bless you so good to see you in the house of the Lord on today amen
trust that everyone had a, a happy Thanksgiving. Amen. You didn't eat too much. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we certainly thank God for just bringing us safely back from our little cruise that we had right before Thanksgiving. And amen. It was uh, a wonderful time of just relaxation. And um, uh, got a chance just to see the service on last week and just really enjoyed the precious brother Bill and amen him coming uh, just to be a blessing to the hearts of the saints and uh, just just appreciate all that was done in Jesus name I know we got many that are away this uh, weekend for um, just because of the holiday and everything but we thank God for you that are here this morning so good to have a man um, two of my good friends here uh, brother Stephen a man from here with us this morning and came along with brother Trevor. Uh, they have uh, recently returned from a trip to Beckway. Uh, they were there in Beckway and uh, ministering and, and um, just uh, the Lord did a, a, a wonderful work and, and some of you all may not know this but um, the, the Lord has called brother Stephen to ministry and uh, he is uh, he's accepted that call. Praise the Lord. So this was his first time going out and preaching the gospel out out out, out abroad there in Beckway and and uh, and just just a real blessing. And, and they told me, uh, Sister Rachel, that all the saints sent their greetings to you, Amen, Amen from Beckway. Uh, but the Lord is blessing them over there. And you know, a few years ago, uh, Sister Rachel and I actually went and um, and I had the chance to minister there. Um, and it's a seven mile island, just. Uh, I'd never heard of Beckway before in my life, and uh, just so happened one of the brothers from their church happened to just be passing through here and uh, looking for a church to fellowship. They found us online, the brothers start fellowship, brother Caleb Ford was his name, and brother Caleb got in where he could get in. He said, I, I know I'm here for a while, I song lead back at, back at home, and if you don't mind, I like the song lead while I'm here. All right, brother, come on. You don't find folk that want to work. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want, you don't find folk that want to work, you know. But I'm on vacation. I'm taking a break. You no, know, anytime the Lord need me to do something, I'm I'm ready to do it for him, you know. And uh, brother Caleb came and you know and he, he invited us. They said you got to you got to um, come, and so we we did. And and they said when you come, you got to bring Sister Rachel with you. I said all right. And I didn't realize, you know, what the impact was. But um, a lot of the churches. A man, we're not used to seeing female musicians, right? They saw male musicians, but they weren't used to seeing female musicians. So when they saw Sister Rachel, like what? And they, uh, it just really inspired, you know, some of the sisters there. Not only that, you know, uh, um, we went to Zimbabwe uh, f for the first time some years ago, and and um, and again took some female female musicians. So uh, I remember uh, the pastor made a comment. <laughs> Say all I know is that they can't preach, but they, they, that's what that's all I know. The Bible say they're not supposed to preach preaching. Amen. That's what the Bible say. So, uh, so next, and I went back to Zimbabwe and I saw some sisters on the camera and all kind of. I said, "Well, praise the Lord. That's that's the way it's supposed to be. God got something that we can do, right? Amen. Let's be faithful in what He's called us to do. He'll bless it. He'll bless it. We just stay in our place. God do have an order now." I know the church world has changed its order, but God still has an order. Amen. And he blesses that order. So we, we thank God for all things. A couple things I need to just do here real quick before uh, we get. I'm going to have Brother Stephen come and just greet you in a little bit. And then, then we'll hear from uh, Brother Trevor. Um, I got uh, two cards, amen, that I just wanted to read. Uh, Knowing people nice as you gives life a brighter touch. And so to each and all of you, thanks very, very much. Um, this is in the loss of our dear mother, Ruby L. Daniels. Thank you for the love, thoughts, and prayers, the dishes and donations, uh, the hands that you lent to our family. May God bless each and every one of you. And that's from that's love from the Daniels family also uh, to Brother Jack and Spirit and Truth Tabernacle. We appreciate your love, support, cards, and prayers. Uh, love from Sister Brown, Brother Michael, Sister Linda, and Sister Laura and the loss of their brother. Amen. So uh, just wanted to acknowledge that and want you to just continue to keep both families in prayer and their loss uh, during, amen, this season. Uh, this is first Sunday, amen, of, uh, of the year. 
I mean, uh, of December, and um, I wanted to give our building fund update real quick. Amen. And uh, I'll just do that real quick, and then I'll have uh, Brother Stephen uh, prepare to come. Uh, we are so grateful for, for the Lord Jesus, amen, and just, just what he's done for us this year. And not only what he done for us this year, but what he did for us last year and, and what he continues to do for us. I'm under expectation that he's getting ready to open up some doors that we can't see. <laughs> amen, things that he's getting ready to do, so I'm, 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 I'm believing God. It's just the second slide, if you just uh, could uh, press play on that for me. is for the glory of God because our plan is to buy a building. That's what that money's for, is to buy a building. Now next month, what I will do, amen, we'll have a, a business meeting there in January and uh, and I'll, I'll give you just, I'll show you just uh, through the presentation just the total amount that we had from last year and we had this year and, um, you know, and even from the year before, but I know uh, the Lord has allowed us to accumulate uh, roughly over $70,000, and I'm, I'm grateful for, for that. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, because I know where we were. I know where we come from. There's times we couldn't get no more than $5,000, right? And then we get that, then we have to use it to pay some bills. But God has been so faithful to us, and, and when, I, when I look at it, I just, I'm just, I, I just believe that this is our season. Sister, 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 God said we're in a new season now. We have authority. Amen. So I'm just, I, I believe this is our season. When you see the angel Lord moving like this, you have to, you got to get ready to jump in. Amen. Don't come to God with excuses. I've been waiting years for this. No, no, it's time to jump in. The angel of the Lord is moving now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, uh, so I'm just, I don't, I don't know how and when, but I just, I got my, I got my faith on the line that God going to bless us uh, with a building. Amen. And, and I still got a particular building in my heart that I'm looking at and they ain't been able to sell it. Amen. And ain't nobody else been able to buy it. Uh, you know, I was talking to the uh, realtor and they told me some things that happened with the building. They said, um, said they had sold a, a house and they sold the apartments. I said, that's fine. Really, we want the church. And, um, and, and my belief is that if we get the church, eventually we're going to get the house and we get the apartment. We get it all. That's, that's what we ask God for, right? So I don't, it doesn't matter that they bought it. They can have it for now. It's temporary, right? But we'll, we'll take the church. And it's, 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 so they say, um, um, 
you know, we there's somebody that submitted an offer, but we got to take it before the board because um, we don't, you know, know if the board are going to approve it or not. And um, and and I say, well, you know, what they just told me is that they did not like the offer that was presented by the other person. Therefore, they have to take it to the board to see if the board going to approve. So it's going to take a long time to approve. That means they did not get the full price offer. That's what they just said. And I say, if they would take their offer, then maybe we can come up with an offer that they board can consider. It won't be what they're asking, but it's an offer. <laughs> it's an offer. So there's some number here somewhere that we're going to find that's going to work for everybody. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm under expectation, church. Y'all just keep it in prayer that the Lord would just watch over, amen, of this process. And, and, and I'm just, I, I don't even want to say things like, if that ain't it, then God got something else for us. I don't want to even talk like that. that. That just seemed like I just put a little doubt in there. So I'm, I ain't going to say that until it's sold. <laughs> Right. Maybe that wasn't it. Because, you know, when I when I when I bought my the house that we have, uh, we actually went looking at multiple houses and God closed many doors. Amen. Uh, for us. And, and God knew exactly what we needed. And uh, when he brought us to the house that we have now, he met every one of our needs that we had. So uh, God know what he's doing. I know that much. I know that much. But since it's available, I'm going to put my faith on it. Amen. I'm going to put my faith on it. So y'all keep it in prayer. Y'all keep it in prayer. This year ain't over with. Y'all know what year this is? All right. Praise the Lord. God can do something incredible. We're on expectation. Brother Stephen, amen, Soldequist, he's going to come at this time and just greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, a precious friend of mine uh, from Indiana. Amen. God bless you, Brother Stephen. God bless you, precious saints. It's so good to be here. I've wanted to come for such a long time, and I know many of you have come to Indiana, and I'm so thankful to, to have you there with us and sing. And Brother Solomon was talking about his favorite singers, Brother Jack and Brother Hammond, I think he said. But uh, I have to say I agree with him, except uh, I don't know that other brother. But my two favorite are Brother Jack and Brother Solomon. So. I uh, had a treat this morning already, and uh, looking forward to what the Lord will have. But as far as favorite singers, there's uh, on the female side, he mentioned, uh, there's one of my favorites singing, sitting here, right. sister, Brother Jack's <laughs> wife, I mean mother. And uh, my, uh, I have to say, my number one singer is my wife uh, on the female side. So she wasn't able to come, but we'll, we'll definitely try and bring her down and, and fellowship with you sometime soon. So we, uh, as Brother Jack mentioned, we went to, to Beckway, and uh, as he mentioned, I had accepted the call in my life. I'd been kind of avoiding it for a while, and um, Brother, Brother Nathan, our pastor there at the Church of the Open Door, had been preaching for probably about a year on yielding. And boy, I, every service, it was just hitting me and hitting me. And oh, Lord, I, I know I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But after a while, he has a way of getting through. And I, I'm so thankful to be serving him and, and in his will. And I just wanted to mention a, a little story from when we were down there in Beckway. You know, uh, Brother Bram said in this age that the, the love of many would wax cold. And there, you wouldn't really find true love outside of this bride. And uh, I know in, in a message uh, he, in his presence, he talked about how when you come into the presence of God, that you want to go and tell someone. You want to tell people about the Lord. And you know, when we were there in Beckway, uh, we went about four years ago, and I noticed out by the airport, they have this grassy airport that they built out into the sea, and there's grass kind of all around it. And there was this real nice playground, and, and the parents were there, and their children were playing on the playground. And it was just, it struck me how wonderful the fellowship was amongst these people. These were just people on the island. And uh, I was so sad to see this time when we went that that, that that playground was overgrown with grass and nobody was there. The parents were gone, the children were gone. It was just a sign of this time, no matter where you're at, the culture's changing and the people are changing and technology is coming to the island and so forth. But we know that amongst the bride, that love is there. And I just wanna encourage you to stay uh, the sweet group that you are. 
keep pressing on. Amen. And one, one more testimony. Uh, Brother Jack was mentioning the building fund. Um, over there, they're building a building also. And the Lord is providing, and, and they're doing what they need to do, knowing they don't have everything in place yet. They don't have all their money, but on faith, they purchased some land. Right. And on faith, they got the bricks, and they right. started laying the foundation, right. trusting the Lord to bring them all the way through right. the end. Right. And uh, we, we were able to go at a time when they found out some information that the, some brothers in the U.S. had come together and had donated some money so they can keep the work going right. and put that roof on. Right. And I know the Lord's going to be doing the same for your all's building fund. I, um, you know, there's going to be some trials. I think back a couple years ago, I, I bought a house. We, we had a house, my wife and I, for about 10 years, and we sold our house, and we bought a new house. And the interesting thing was is we had special permission to move our stuff into the house before the closing date. And I thought, well, thank you, Lord. This is wonderful. Uh, and, and as the offer was accepted, there was other people that was wanting this house, just like other people's wanting, I guess, this property. And, and, and the, the real estate agent said, there's showings lined up the whole weekend long, and, and said to the seller, do you want to take this offer from Mr. Soderquist? And, and the man said, well, I think I do want to take it. He gave me my asking price. That's what I wanted. I'll take it. And the real estate agent probably saw the dollar signs in her eyes, said, are you certain? you got showings listed all weekend long. Somebody's going to come in and give you a higher price and said, no, they gave me what I wanted. I'm going to give it to them. I know that was the Lord. But you know, the thing is, there was trials after that because we got this special uh, prepossession. Our stuff was already moved into the house. We'd already moved into the house even wow. before closing, a couple days before closing. And the I think it was two days before closing, I got notice that I'd been laid off of my job. My job had gone away. And here I sit in this house, losing my job before closing. What, and you know what Satan comes and says, you know, they're gonna, you're gonna get to closing, you're not, they're gonna find out your job got let go, and then you're gonna have to move all your stuff and your family to some apartment, you know, and you get worried by that. Well, I had never met this lady, this recruiter. I work in the IT field, and she came, and uh, I reached out to her. I never met her, but I had heard about her, and I reached out, and I said, I, I, I'm in need of a job, ma'am. Do you know of anything in my uh, profession? And she said, I do. I do know of something. And so she set me up on an interview, and it was with a company I had worked for before, and I get onto this phone call on this interview, and it was the man who had hired me before. Wow. And he said, come on, come on back, come on back. So the Lord provided me the job, and we were able to close on the house. And I just want to say, friends, the Lord is mindful of you. And I'm so encouraged that Brother Jack and you all have been able to raise these funds, and I know he's going to take you the rest of the way. God bless you, saints. I love you so much. Amen. My God. God know how to encourage you. You send the right person along at the right time just to strengthen your faith. Oh, my. And see, I guess the, sometimes we don't see it that way, but by him moving the stuff in the house before the closing, God was already trying to say, this is yours. No matter what happened afterwards, this is yours. Don't move your stuff now. Because, see, had he not moved his stuff in, he might not have done it after he found out he was losing his job. God know how to set you up before something because he got great things in store. He ready to do the exceeding, the abundant, above all you can ask a thing. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. There was a song. Um, I was listening to... Um, and who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Oh my, y'all know that? This song says victory belongs to Jesus. <laughs> Brother Trevor was singing this this morning as um, we were coming uh, towards the church. And uh, I said, you know that song, Brother Trevor? <laughs> Was singing it in uh, in Beckway. I said, okay, well, we'll have to try to do a little bit of that amen this morning as he prepares to come to bring us the word of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. 
Amen. Let's prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Who can stand against the Lord? And who can stand against the Lord? Say no one can. Hallelujah. And no one will. Hallelujah. the king no one can no one oh, we hallelujah oh, come on say victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him oh On everybody, oh, 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 yeah, victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah! Victory belongs to Him. Who can stand against the Lord? Everybody, lift your voice. Say, Who can stand against the Lord? Oh, no one can. Hallelujah! Oh, and no one will. Who can stand against our king? No one. Yes, oh, and who can stand against our king? No one can. And no one. No one will. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. It's Jesus Christ that brings victory into your life. Amen. That's who victory belongs to. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I'll just have you turn to Luke chapter 16 and verse 16. Appreciate the song service and the specials. Always enjoy it very much when we come here. Happy to be back Amen. with my Florida family. Yes. Yes. Amen. Man, just 18 years of met Brother Jack, and it's been a wonderful relationship. I was just flipping through the thing with the, all the minister sign and just seeing how many, just how many times we've been together and just appreciate the Lord um, creating this opportunity. Brother Jack was... Um, one of the really the first minister that ever had me had me preach outside of uh, um, you know my home church back in South Dakota and one other place just real real close friend of the family and before I'd really even accepted a call to be preaching but um, so I I appreciate this place very much Amen so Luke chapter sixteen and verse sixteen the law and the prophets were until John since that time the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presses into it. If you'd also turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, we'll read verses 13 through 15. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward, forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So even if you're perfect, you should have this mind. This mind is that you should be pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You say, well, but, but wait, 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 wait. What is there to be 
What, what is there to do after I'm perfect? Like, haven't I arrived? Right. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, um, Lord, may you break down this scripture to us. May you open our eyes to it, Lord. I was just seeing that uh, little plaque in the pastor's study about open the young man's eyes. Father, I pray that you'd open the eyes of our hearts Hallelujah. this morning to see your word, to see our place in it, to see how you have perfected us by the blood of Jesus Christ. But Father, that we should never count ourselves to have apprehended, but that we should continue to press the mark. Show us uh, what that mark would be, Father, that we would press towards it. We ask it in the name. Lord, just, just anoint us Hallelujah. this morning. Anoint me to speak. May it be your words, Father. I ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. <clears throat> so I want to take a title of Press the Mark. Right. Now, if I had slides or something like that, you would, you would see that I, I want to emphasize the mark. Uh -huh. I, I know that you've heard a hundred sermons on pressing. And I know that, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to be an evangelist, and evangelists like to come and stir the people up and get them all, you know, happy. And, you know, evangelists are kind of like grandparents, right? I mean, you, you send your kids to the grand, you know, grandparents, and they sugar them up, they get them all stirred up, and then they send them back, you know, to the pastor back at home. And then the pastor's got to deal with all of that, and, you know. And, and then all the people are like, well, how come you're not giving us candy, pastors? Well, because, you know, sometimes some of us got to feed you something good, you know. So, so I know that you've heard a hundred sermons on pressing and pressing the mark. And, and, you know, so as much as it, I would love to do that and, you know, well, just frankly, that's not me. And, you know, it, it'd be just kind of awkward me trying to sit here and try to get you on your feet and try to get you all shouting and rushing the pulpit and things like that. That's never happened really ever when I've preached. I, it's, it just doesn't happen. Because it's not me. And I'm okay with that. But what I do want to talk about is I want to talk about the mark. You see, because I believe that if we can understand what the mark is... That, that, that the, the idea of the, that I won't have to come, if you get, catch a vision of what the mark is, I don't have to come here and feed you sugar and get you all stirred up and go, yeah, 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 let's go, let's press, let's press. No, if you see what the mark truly is, you'll be like, mmm, going. I'm going. You see, see the, the problem of our pressing, it's not, it's not a motivation, it's not our emotion, it's not our, you know, where we're at, but the problem mo most of the time is, is we don't know truly what the mark is. And if we really looked at what the mark is and valued the mark and kept the mark high enough to where we realized, you know, I want that mark to be high. I want that mark to be, to be essentially unattainable because then I can continue to practice. I can continue to press because if you have a high mark, there's value. If you bring down the mark and everybody can hit it, well, did you hit the mark today? Yeah, I hit the mark today, along with a bajillion other people. Yeah, that's right. You know, good job, good job. You know, it's like, you know, giving trophies to all the kids in, but, that played soccer, whether they won anything or not. <laughs> oh, did you get a trophy today? Oh, that's so amazing. You must be so good. Like, actually, I got tired and I sat down and picked daisies. And then the ball hit me in the head, but I got a trophy. Yay! Yay, that's what happens, you know. And so, and so we, we even recognize the kids, the kids don't, it's like, oh, yeah, I got another certificate. Throw it in the thing with the rest of the certificates. You know, like, it, there's no value to it. You know, but, but there were some things that my kids did. You know, I, I, I was surprised. I, I, when my kids were younger, I said, well, let's do this triathlon. And I thought, there's no way. You know, because if I would have been them, I'd have been like, Dad, you want us to do a triathlon? Yeah, that sounds lame. You want me to run, bike, and swim long distances? Yeah, no. Great idea, Dad. You know, great, yeah, but no. But my kids were like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And, and, and my daughter actually got second place. And, and, and the only reason she didn't get first place is because the other, you know, we hadn't upgraded her bicycle yet. And so the girl that actually won had a, you know, big, you know, person bike. And so, you know, those wheels cover a whole lot more ground, you know, and she's like pedaling for all she's worth and she's got these little wheels and otherwise she beat her in, you know, both the run and the swim. But wow. anyway, 
She remembers that. She values that trophy because she knows she did well. Right. Not everybody got a trophy. And she, you know, and, and then it got to the point where she was just like, hey, can we do those kinds of things again? Because she realized she was pretty good at it. And she realized that, you know, hey, there's trophies that I can earn. Right. That there's something in, you know, that something about me and my uniqueness and my individuality. See, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. And, and I can go and press this thing. And I can actually achieve something. Right. You see, when, and, and so now there's value attached to it. Right. You see, what we try to do in our age is try to lower the mark so often. That's what our culture tries to do is lower the mark, lower the mark, lower the mark. You lower the mark. You, and, and why do we do that in culture? Why do we lower the mark? Well, we lower the mark because to keep a high mark is essentially interpreted as mean these days. You know, it's, it, it's if one kid wins and one kid loses, so that's mean to the, to the losing kid. Well, n- no. That's, it's not mean. That just... That's life. That just happened. You know, nobody went over to the kid and like, I'm going to, you know, you know, beat you while you're down. Like, that would be mean. Okay. But it's, it's not mean to have a competition and have one person that succeeded more than the other. The other would just say then, oh, you know what? We need to work a little harder. We need to try a little better. We need to, you know, have a little more practice. And then we could be feeling the, what they feel right now. But in, in our culture, we interpret, you know, well, the higher the mark is, the more value is attached, and that's great. But if we bring it down, see, then everyone can achieve. It's like, yay, everyone can feel worthless together. Can we all just hug ourselves right now? And what's the, what's the point of that? See, see, then there's nothing that's mean, but then there's nothing that's really worth doing. Right. Right. When you bring down the mark, nothing's worth it. You bring down the mark, you bring down the thing that is to be achieved, you bring down the value. And then now we wonder why we have a generation of people who are totally depressed, who are on uh, on medication, who are sitting there with hundreds and thousands of friends on their phone and lonely. Because we've given them nothing to do. We've given them nothing to achieve. The mark has come down so low, like we can't even we can't even decide whether or not they're a man or a woman or or you know. I mean, the mark has come down so far. There's zero definition of anything in culture. And if there's zero definition of anything in culture, then then nothing matters anymore. To the point where now even the feminists are getting mad at the, you know, the, the newer movie, you know, the LGBTQ movements because, you know, well, there's. Well, how come we can't be we can't be happy about being powerful women if it doesn't matter if we're women or men anymore. I mean, did you ever think you'd see that day? Why? Because the mark got brought down so far. There's no, there's no definition. And if there's no definition, there's no value. Now, do you think culture tr- doesn't, has no way that it gets into the message, has no way that it gets into the word of God? Well, you know, if you do, come out from under the rock and good morning. I'm your wake up call here. It happens. And if we're not careful, we'll tend to bring the mark that we are pressing towards down and lower and lower because then everyone achieves. Then we can be one big happy church family, you see. And, 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 and to be quite honest, unfortunately, that's the mark that many of us have tried to, to bring about in a church is to say, well, the mark of a good church is to be one really big happy family. And as long as we love one another and everybody's, you know, we just, you know, we have fellowships and we have food and we have, you know, and we have good worship and we have, you know, of course the preaching and, and you know, but as long as everyone's really united and happy, then we're a good church. Is that the mark? Because if that's the mark and you're hitting it, then great. Come on, brother. That's not the mark. That's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing to have. And I hope your church has that. But, but, but that's not the mark. Anybody should be able to achieve that. But that's not the mark. The problem is, is when we think we hit a mark, we tend to stagnate. We tend to, you know, stop. Well, I've, I've hit the mark. 
like we read in the scripture. Not as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Paul is telling us you, you, you need to feel like you, you, you have to press. Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended. Yeah. Paul says, I myself have not hit the mark. Now, now I just want, I just, let's think about who Paul is, the first church age messenger. You know, a, a, a man who has so much revelation in his life that, that, that God gives him a thorn in his flesh. Now, it, anybody else have that kind of revelation? You got a physical problem because you have too much revelation? Like that, 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 that if you don't have this physical problem in your flesh, you're going to get a little prideful? Anybody? Okay, but this man found that he has not apprehended yet. So it was no problem for him to press. He didn't have to wake up in the morning and go, okay, you know, meditation, get my mind on the right things, visualize what I am supposed to do for today. Yes, okay, now I feel good and I'm going to press. No, he, he, just, he just knew there was so much there for him to attain. There was so much of God for him to be able to press towards that it just, it, it was just like, ooh, man, there's so much. I want him so much. He's so amazing. He's so great. He's so righteous. You know, I mean, what are you, what are you looking for in the millennium? What, what, are you, what are you looking for when we get to the millennium? What do you want the millennium to be like? What do you want the millennium to be like? Good food? You're next, so think. You know. Okay, what do you want the millennium to be like? You don't know? You guys need to think about this a little bit more, okay? We'll come back next time and we'll ask you. <laughs> She's laughing. What do you want the millennium to be like? Peace and happiness. We want peace and happiness in the millennium, right? Yeah. Why do you want peace and happiness in the millennium? Because you're selfish. You want it for yourself. You know it. <clears throat> so I want peace and happiness in the millennium. Well, why? Well, because I just really want that. Okay, yeah, that's good, good. I'm just teasing. I actually told myself I was selfish one time, so you're no different than me. So, Brother Kwaku, what do you want? What do you want, Millennium? More manifestation of Jesus Christ. Okay. Like, how so? Like, in how would you see that physically manifested? What, what is it you'd like to see? He, yeah, he wants to be a musician, the Millennium. <laughs> Why? Because he's not here. He wants it for himself. No, he probably wants it so he can praise God. So, so the, the, really where I'm, where I'm trying to go is this, I, I asked myself this time, you know, am I being selfish by, like, Lord, I just, man, bring on the millennium, Lord. And then I, I started asking myself, why? Why do you want the millennium? Well, because I, you know, good food, you know, it's happy, there's peace. There's, there's, you know, righteousness. We don't have to, you know, just like, oh my, <laughs> can't look over that way. Yeah. I don't have to deal with that in the millennium, right. you know. And then I thought, Lord, am I being selfish? Why do I want these things? And I began to th realize the reason I want these things is because I want Jesus Christ. And if, if the millennium is peaceful, it's because Jesus Christ is there and made it so. If the millennium has righteousness, it's because Jesus is righteous and he made it so. Everything I like and everything you want about the millennium is because God has made it so. It's because the, everything you want of the, out of the millennium is a manifestation of the character of God physically on the earth. That's why you want the millennium is because you want God. Now, many times we don't think through all that, all, all that way. It took me a very long time to come there and realize it's not just that I want peace, but it's that I want peace because it comes from God, that God is the source of everything that is wonderful in the millennium. So, of course, I, if I don't have all of that now, then I want to strive and press for that because that is the mark. I want to keep the mark high. I want peace in my life now because why? He gives it to me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, so there's a there's a mark that's high that we should press towards because it's who God is. Amen. Amen. And I'll give you a little secret. You know, the closer you get to Him, the more you find of Him to get. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit, but but that shouldn't be defeating. That should be exciting. It's like man, whoo! You know, it's like it's like you know going for a run and getting five miles in and then realizing. There's still like 10 miles left, and I thought I was getting closer, but 
Well, that would be, that would be pretty defeating feeling. But that's for, for me, for sure. Like, running that far, are you kidding me? Like, I always thought, you know, I'm going to run to that stop sign. And you start running, you know, you get down to like two driveways away, and you're like, man, that stop sign's a long way away. <laughs> I set that mark way too high. But that's not the way it is with Christ. With Christ, the closer you get to him, the, the, the more you find like, wow, there's so much more to get. But it's amazing Amen. because you realize the journey has been wonderful. Amen. And you realize, wow, he is he, he's just so much greater than I ever thought. Amen. You know, I don't think about the stop sign. Wow, it's so it's so much redder than I ever thought it would be. I'm so glad I'm here. Like, no, that's it's not even a comparison. God gets more amazing, and so you, 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 so it is your desire to have more of Him grow. Amen. But that is if you keep the mark high, because once you've brought the mark down and you feel like, oh, I'm finally there, I'm there, and I'm good, yay. I'm a message believer. It's so good to be here. I have attained. Going in the rapture, my name is written down. And all these things are wonderful. All these things are great. But if that, if that has caused you to stop pressing, then you've missed what the mark should really be. Because the mark is not just come in, sit on the pew, do the message thing, say the message stuff. Amen. Clap at the right times, rejoice at the right times, say the right things. No. That's a low mark. That's right. I'm glad if you've hit that mark. Praise God. You should strive to hit that mark, but that is not it. That is not. And, and you say, no, 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 but Brother Trevor, you know, isn't this a carrot on the stick? You know, you keep the, you know, you're riding on something and uh, on the horse and you keep the, you have a stick and you keep the carrot and the more the horse goes, it doesn't matter. The carrot is out on the end of the stick and he never gets there. Say, Brother Trevor, like, you know, I got the Holy Ghost. Like, you guys have been preaching to me. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need your new birth. You, you know, and, and you need to clean your life up. And I've done all of those things. And I finally did that. And now you're telling, now you're telling me, now that I've got the Holy Ghost, and you're like, nope, still not there. You got to keep going. Is that, that's just a carrot on the stick. Like, when is it enough, Brother Trevor? When is it enough, Brother Jack? Right. When have I? And so, so, so make sure that your discernment is right here. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm not talking about the purchase. All right. I'm talking about your life. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about your purpose. Amen. I'm talking about what, what can define you even as an individual. Oh my, I'm trying to get all these notes out in like one sentence and it's just not working. <clears throat> Like we talked about, if the world brought it low and there's no definition, then, then everybody's just a bunch of mush and nothing matters. And if nothing matters, there's nothing worth doing. If there's nothing worth doing, then what are you here for? Can you imagine that? So, so bringing that back into the spiritual realm, can you imagine sitting there having the Holy Ghost and feeling like, well, but I mean, I've arrived. And if I've arrived, what's my purpose? What am I doing? What is there of value? What is it that God is asking me to do? Now, some of you would avoid that. You want to avoid what is God asking me to do. But I tell you, if you're avoiding what God is asking you to do, if you're avoiding the personal responsibility that God is calling you for, then you're avoiding purpose. If you're avoiding purpose, you're avoiding value. If you're avoiding value, what are you doing? You're bringing the mark down, and when you bring the mark down, you sit on the pew like a puddle of mush. Oh, your message mush, your Holy Spirit filled mush, but you're just mush. There's no definition, there's no nothing there. But what I am telling you today is that God has a mark that's so high and so wonderful that, 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 that he wants you to press. And it, and it talks about even you as an individual. Let me just forward, you know, like five pages into the notes and talk about this. I don't, we'll just let the Lord do what he wants. A Christian is not a tool or some kind of mechanical wrench to a great big religious regime. That's right. A Christian is not some kind of tool that keeps a religious organization moving. That, that's not a Christian. A, a Christian is to be Christ-like. Right. And a Christian cannot be a Christian until Christ comes into the man, the life of Christ in him. Right. 
then it produces the life that Christ lived and you do the things that Christ did. Did Jesus just sit on a pew? Oh, Jesus went to church. Yes. Is that all Jesus did? Now, let's, let's, let's read another one. The identified masterpiece of God. We're always going to be that way because God is not a Sears and Robot Harmony House. He is a God of variety. He makes one one way and one another. But we must serve him in the way that God made us and be glad and stay behind his word. And that's the way God did it. You see, God has a uniqueness in you. God made you a specific way. And God had a reason to make you the way he made you. This isn't just psychology. This isn't just the new age stuff. Everybody just hug yourself and God made me lovely the way. It's not just that. No, like they've taken that and perverted that. But there's nothing but the truth. God made you a specific way. God made, God made my brother here his way and the way he teaches and preaches the message. It's different than me. And God wanted it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, um, I think it was the meetings, I think 2014 or somewhere around there. It's, it's me and Brother Andrew Glover preaching the meetings together. <laughs> That's like a good joke. <clears throat> you know... <laughs> I don't wear a size 23 shoe, you know, I mean. <laughs> you know, you get me who doesn't get a crowd up and off their feet very much and rush in the pulpit and then you get Andrew Glover who like does. You know, and I'm like, calm down people, let's talk about the word, you know, and Brother Andrew's like, come on, raise the roof, you know, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm this and, you know, Brother Andrew's. <laughs> Except he only needed like two hops to do that. Come on, brother. And I could be tempted. You know, I could be tempted because, you know, as a preacher, you know, I, hey, on, I, I like that right there that you're hearing, you know. Get up off your seat just a little bit more and rush the pulpit, you know, and come on, I want you guys to do that because it, man, that would just make me feel like an amazing preacher. The response I got out of the people, oh my goodness, and, and, and if I don't get that, maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'm not as good of a preacher as Brother Andrew Glover. And I could get discouraged. But God didn't make me that way. He didn't give me size 23 shoe to hop across this, you know, in two hops. And get all excited and, you know, do that, you know, all the way around thing, you know. Because when he does it, you know, y'all get like, yeah, this is great. And when I do it, you laugh. <laughs> so I realized God didn't make me to do that. But I'm not, I'm, that's not the, that's not how God made me. That's not the purpose that God shaped me for. And that's fine. That's good. And maybe then I should just focus on the things that God put in me to do through me. Another quote here, Brother Branham talks about how they were cutting out the stones for the temple, you know, and they'd be slotting these little stones. And he says, you know, maybe God had some, some odd shaped stones, I think is, is that what he says? God down through time has cut out some very odd stones that we might not have understood. But they have their place exactly in the temple, in the building of God. And Joshua, by inspiration, not by just mathematics, he inspired by God. He was talking about how they positioned Ephraim and, and the, the, these different things. So, so God has odd stones. He says, God in his master works. No one could have ever done it but God. There's no way of doing it. God alone. It was to be theirs forever. It was a gift from God by his marvelous grace. Give these people this land and this position and place them in it according to his word and the birth of the people. Just perfect and how it clocked right together. And I think it was a type. So what he's saying is, is that maybe you're an odd stone. Maybe you feel like you're cut just a little bit different. That you're maybe just a little bit different than other one, than someone else. And don't, I just wish I could be this person or like that person. And you know what? God made you that way. God cut you that way. Because God wants to use that. God wants to use how he made you to bring glory to his name. 
God wants to use you. He wants to use you in your uniqueness and in your individuality. Then what an offense would it be then if we're to just, well, yeah, I'm unique and I'm individual, but you know I got the Holy Ghost and so preach on, preacher. Because I have attained and I'm going there and praise the Lord. Come, even so, come Lord Jesus. I will sit and relax till you get here. You see, that's a low mark. Now you could say, oh, Brother Trevor, you just want us to press more. No, I want you to raise the mark up. I want you to realize where the mark is. And, and, and you know what's so great about that is when you bring the mark up and it inspires you, but then it also gives you the value, then you recognize that God is valuing you. More than he's, he's, he's valuing more than just sitting on a pew, but he has enough value in you to, to make you in a certain way that he wanted to use you in a certain way. As you press the mark, he then fills you with purpose. And when you fulfill a purpose, it's wonderful. Amen. See, when you take responsibility, when you take responsibility... Now, these days, we look at, oh, man, responsibility. Like, everyone just wants to get out of responsibility. Talk about it. Right? Right? Think, well, Jesus paid it all. I don't have responsibility. No, he, yeah, not, not in your salvation. But doesn't he deserve you? Doesn't he deserve getting glory out of your life? And if he begins to get glory out of your life, you'll start realizing, like, this is the best thing ever. Amen. And, and like you'll become like addicted to like God get glory out of me. Right. Now, now that's one addiction that I'm probably okay with. Right. And then you'll feel wonderful about yourself and that's a self-esteem I'm kind of okay with. Right. Like hey, I just have you know I serve God. I feel good about it. Right. Man, I love preaching. I mean just, you know, my daughter always asks me, what was the best part of your trip, daddy? <laughs> it's always the same answer. Preaching. We were, we were just in, a, a, in the Caribbean on a seven square mile island with beautiful beaches, perfect weather, amazing, this amazing creation that in, if you've never been snorkeling or diving, like you, you think, you know, like you've seen God's creation and then you, you put your eyes underwater in the Caribbean and you recognize like I know nothing about the creation of God because there is a, another world down here. And, it, and it's just amazing. But the best part of that trip was preaching. As I love serving him. I love to encourage the people. I love that God, church, I love that God can use me. Me. I know who I am. I know what I've, where I've been and what I've come from, and I know what my faults are. I know what my failures are. I know that I still have to, you know, I still have to make sure my thoughts are right and that I don't think the wrong things and that I don't, you know. But God wants to use me. God values me. He shouldn't do that, but he does. And he has value in you. And he wants to use you. He doesn't want you to just sit stagnant, but he wants this one thing that, that you to be mindful of, that you should press the mark. Because the more you press the mark, the more God can use you. The more God can use you, the better you're going to feel and the, the more wonderful it's going to be. And you'll have this great relationship with God. And you'll be moving forward and moving forward and recognizing there's more of God to get. And, but God is using me more and more and more. And it's just this, man, it's just this wonderful cycle that you feel better and you do more. And are there going to be hard times? Sure, there's going to be hard times. But there'll be value in your life. There'll be purpose in your life. Why? Because you're taking a personal responsibility to press towards a mark that is really, really high. And you have to work at it. And, and we think that seems lame these days. Like, oh, you have to work at it. Like, wow, work is hard and I don't want to work. I'd rather be lazy. And, and, and it's like, well, that's fine. But then you don't have a mark that you're hitting, do you? So you can be lazy, you know, it's like, it's like kids in the summertime. They finish school, and then, you know, what are you gonna do this summer? Well, I've been working so hard, you know, like six hours a day. <laughs> They've been working so hard. You know, not like adults who 
don't get the summer off and we're working eight hours a day, but they've been working so hard, you know, at, uh, you know, fifth grade math that, you know, what are you going to do this summer? A whole lot of nothing. Like, I mean, I am so wiped from fifth grade math that phew, I'm going to take two months off and I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do anything this summer. And you get towards the end of the summer and it's just like, well, hey, how was your summer? It's like, well, I didn't do anything. Like, well, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's not really good. Like, it seemed like such a good idea at the beginning of the summer, but now I look back and like, what? I, I just wasted my summer. Like, I sat in front of a screen and played video games, and I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't get anywhere. I just, I just sat there and became a puddle of mush all summer long. And you ask, you know, you ask them like, well, did you enjoy it? Yeah, no, I guess not. Why? Well, because they set a low mark, and they hit it. They hit the mark they set. But it was so, such a low mark that they, they themselves didn't even ascribe value to it after they hit it. Set the mark high, and you'll feel good about trying to hit it. And you may, not, you may never actually hit it, and as a matter of fact, you won't hit it. But the point I was saying about that, the carrot on the stick, you know, you think, well, you're saying we set the mark high and then we never hit it and won't that be depressing? It's like, is that, is that really how small your God is? That, 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 that he's, he's good with you just, you know, do you do the right things and then, you're, you know, that's what you give him? That's how small he is? Because I serve a God that's so big and so amazing and so wonderful that e even if I never hit it, like, fine, I'm diving in. Yes. I'm pressing on. I'm going high. I'm getting more into him and more into him. Because it's wonderful. Because it has value. Right. You know, we have the quote, we, we, often, we often quote this to ourselves. We, we, we say, you know, well, Brother Brenham says we're, we're living far below our privileges. We're, we're living millions of miles below our privileges. You know, when these young men someday, you know, they're going to want the privilege of driving. And before they get keys to a car, they're going to have to show something. They're going to have to show there's responsibility that they can handle that privilege. Amen. You know, what, are, what has every parent ever said when the child comes and says, I want a pet? Well, you, you'll have to feed it. You'll have to clean up after it. You'll have to wash it. You'll have, you know, there's so much responsibility that goes with the privilege of having a pet. Right. And then we read the quote in church, we live far below our privileges. Well, if we tie privileges to responsibility in life, and then we read this quote and say, well, we're just living far below our privileges. God has so much more that he wants to give us and pour out on us, and we're just living far below it. Like, how is it that we're living far below our privileges? What is it, we, you know, we, 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 we want that pet in Christ. What do we have to have? Responsibility in Christ. We want access to the keys and access to the car in Christ. Then maybe we're going to have to have the responsibility in Christ. Responsibility is not a bad thing, though this culture would try to say that. Laziness is a bad thing. It gives you no value. It brings you down to depression. But responsibility in Christ can give you more privileges. And God is happy with you, and you're happier with you, and everything's just happy. Why? Because you're pressing the mark. And it's a high mark. And you're not sitting around thinking, well, I've just attained. I'm all good. I'm going there. Name's written down. Praise God. Even so, come Lord Jesus. No. I'm pressing the mark that I can have responsibility. That God can use me. That God can fill me. Yes, even me. God can do something through. And how wonderful. I mean, I reflect on that and it's like, God, that's so amazing. Use me more then. Put, yes, Lord. Put, put me in the harness and let me pull for you. Okay, I'm pressing God. You see, I'm not telling you to press. I'm telling you to set your mark high. Don't bring your mark down. Maybe I should put my notes down and look at it for just a moment here. Praise the Lord. So a big problem is, is that we think we've arrived so many times. Brother Branham says... All of our churches have sowed the winds, they're reaping the whirlwind. We don't have the prayer meetings. We don't have the services we used to have. What's the matter? We've let down the bars on everything. Even to our Pentecostal churches, sitting full of bobtaired women, we've let down the bars. Brother Branham says that little song, you know, we let down the bars, we let down the bars. The sheep got out, but how did the goats get in? 
you know, our culture today is like sheep, goats, four-footed animals. Like, who's to say one's one, which one we should keep this one in and that one out? Like, that's, yeah, no, there's sheep that keep in. There's goats that keep out. The bars are, are the, the, the definition, the delineation of what is good and what is not good. All right. You have to set a, a high mark. Yes. You know, if you, if you want to be an archer and you want to, you want to be known as a good archer, an Olympic, you know, archery, uh, you know, professional, what do you have to do? We have to practice. You have to train. Right. What are we talking about? Well, there's, a, there's the circles on the wall back there, you know, and the small one in the center is the thing I got to hit. Right. And if I don't hit it, it's like, well, man, I can barely see that little dot in the middle. Like, can we just make that just a little bit bigger? Well, what Olympian wants that? Like, can you make that a little bit bigger? I can hit it better. So can everybody else. So what does that mean? What's well, the purpose of being Olymp an Olympian then? Come on, church. What's the purpose of being a Christian? Is that so you can go to heaven or so that you can hit a, a mark so that you can train, that you can press, that you can go and, and say, God, I, I, maybe by myself, I'll never hit that mark, but I'm going to keep trying and I'm going to keep training because God, you're worth it. And you're worth everything that I can, I can give to you. You're worth everything you can get out of me because you gave me everything that you were. Not only did you give me your physical life and die on a cross for me, but then, then not even the physical blood that cleanses me, but then you gave me your spirit that it could come and live on the inside of me and make this body, make something good out of it, make it an overcomer. Make it something that could press and actually hit a mark from time to time. That's what it's about. You know, we come to a place where, you know, I think it was just a few days ago was the anniversary of JFK um, being killed. And isn't it JFK that said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I always thought, man, that's, you know. Yeah, preach a little while. Come on. That's not just what God can do. God, I need this. God, I need this. And oh God, I need this. Oh God, I need this. But God, what can I do for you today? Isn't he worth it, church? Isn't he worth it? But it's so hard. The mark is so small. It takes so much practice. It, it drains me so much, really. Really, because with those responsibilities and as you, you strengthen, I mean, think about it. Think about, look at, look at how, how far you've come in your Christian walk. Yes, you've come through trials and you, you've come through different things, but, but now take a moment and look back through your life and think, God, I came through this and I came through this and God, you used me here and what a privilege that was to do something for you. And, and then you begin to recognize that there's, there's something that there's value that God is getting out of you and how wonderful that is that to know that God's getting value out of me. And, you know, and instead of just being like, well, I'm just so glad that Jesus saved me and, you know, but I'm just, you know, I'm just the smallest of all Christians and I'm just, you know, I pretty much live a defeated life, but, but I'm so glad for the blood. God wants more than that for you. I mean, thank God. Thank God that you can live that way if you so choose and, and still go to heaven, you know, because, yes, God's blood did, you know, cleanse you from all sins. And, and, and you know, but, but, but then as you begin to like, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do something for him. And, you know, maybe I'll go and, you know, hey, um, can I give you, I just want you to have this, this book or this tract and, you know. I did something for you, Lord. And you see what happens to your posture? Like, like I'm not like this anymore. But then I went and I was like, here you go. God bless you. <laughs> and, 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 and the more you do it, you're like, oh, oh, God bless you here. I want to, I want to give you something. And you recognize that God, man, God's using me. Oh, God bless you, brother. How are you? You know, it's certainly be good to be in, in service for the king, isn't it? And, and, I begin to feel pretty good about this. And it's like, hey, you want a book? I got Let me tell you about a prophet. And your shoulders roll back a little bit. Why? 
because you're becoming a son and daughter of God. Hallelujah. And you're recognizing that a son and daughter of God, they stand erect. They, they walk around like a son of the king, even though there's all kinds of people sitting in slavery in the world. But yet there's a bunch of people that are walking around with, with a different posture because they know they have value, because they know they have purpose, because they're fulfilling a responsibility in their lives that God is giving them. And when they fulfill that purpose, because there's definition that defines what is good, they begin to recognize they are doing something of value. And they don't have to be depressed like the rest of the world because the mark came down, but because they kept the mark high and began to press for it, man, their shoulders came back. They begin to recognize God values me and he wants to do something in my life. And yes, I'll give him everything. Yes, I'll press the mark. Yes, I'll keep going. And that's what God wants out of each and every single one of you. Not only does he want everything from you, but he wants to just continue to fill you and push everything that he is, that is good, into your life. And how good it is to be able to go back and go, my, even 10 years ago, I was still struggling with this and struggling with this. But God, by his grace, has brought me so much farther. And no, I'm, you know, I mean, in one sense, it's like, yes, I'm proud about how far God has brought me. I'm not, I'm not proud about what I did, but I recognize it's that grace. And I'm just so happy that God could have brought me this far, knowing who I am. And now I can serve him like. Like, people around the world actually invite me to come and preach to them. What a crazy thought that is. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so happy to do it, God. I want to press the mark. I haven't apprehended. I'm not stagnating because I'm just sitting there feeling like I've done the thing. I've got it. You know, God, this is all you require, and here you go. I'm done. Happy day. Then you sit there. And then things begin to creep into your life because you, you've just stagnated. You're not pressing. You're not doing anything. You begin to, you begin to lose the, the value. You begin to lose the purpose. You, you begin to lose the vision. And then, then, well, I'm not, well, what are you doing for him? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of bored in the evenings. And so I just, you know, I just play video games. It's, but I'm a Christian. Okay, good. I mean, fine. And then, you know, then things just start coming in your life. Because you've stagnated, because you're not striving, because there's no value anymore, and you're just kind of, you're just sitting and existing, and, you know, then fashion of the world comes in, and then music, and violence, and garbage, you know. We started, we were talking there in Sunday school about, you know, about God being personal. God is very personal. Do you know how wonderful that is? That God is so personal, he wants to live through you. He doesn't want you to just come and sit and be religious. That's not what God wants. God didn't want to just, hey, everybody conform to the moral code that I tell you is right, and then if you do it good enough, uh, and because you couldn't, I, I cleaned you, and then I'll take you to heaven as long as you believe that and try. Well, he's got lofty expectations. If that's who your God is, that small little God that you made up in your mind, but that's not the God of the Bible. It's the God of the Bible that is an amazing God. He's a big God. He's a great God. He's the author of every, everything. He made you. And that amazing, wonderful, marvelous God wants to live inside of you and use you to bring him more glory. Like... Yes, God. That sounds, you know what? You know, next summer, that sounds better than anything I had planned. Amen? Amen. Serving you or sitting there doing nothing. Hmm. Well, if you recognize the value of the mark, there won't be, you won't have to have the sermon that, Yells, you know, press people, press. You gotta press, and you gotta press, and you gotta. You don't have, you don't need that sermon because you're like, hey, God is so amazing. I can't. I just like, I, wait, I get to press. Yay, let's press, cause I want to. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 
See, the problem is, is that, and I, how long have I been preaching? Somebody just, somebody just be honest with me. How long have I been preaching? It's 12.30. What time did I get called out? Oh, my goodness. All right, let me, I don't know. All right, all right, yeah, we got a couple more things that we want to cover. Okay, so, so let's talk about a, a mark that we, that we bring down. And one of the marks that, that I feel strongly that we, we tend to bring is we, is we t well, it's the mark of message culture. And, and, and or the mark of our church culture. And if we hit the church culture, you know, if all the sisters do the things that the other sisters do and all the brothers do the things that the other brothers do. And then, you know, well, we're just, you know, we're just pretty good spirit and truth tabernacle saints. And it's like, well, well, good. And if you've hit that mark, praise the Lord, that's wonderful. You know, but then you begin to look at the others and you go, oh, they they don't do it like we do. Well, then you have a problem because it's like, well, did I hit the, the mark or are they not hitting the mark or? What's, what's the issue? So then we come to message culture, you know, like I've talked about, and we, we kind of feel like, yeah, as long as I do the messagey things, and I say the messagey things, I wear the messagey things, that I'm good. And then, then we stagnate. We stop there, and we go, well, I've arrived because I've, I've hit this mark of culture. And then when we find other churches that don't have this message culture, that, that the same, maybe there's just little bits that are different, you know, and then, then, then what do we do? Well, we recognize, well, well now there's a problem. So, so, yes, as your pastor says, you either lower the mark so that everybody can just be okay, yeah. or what we begin to try to do is we begin to try to say, well, but our message mark is right, so we want to get, you know, everyone else to the same message mark. And you know how we do that? Well, we do, we, we, we do that with our own culture. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, you know, we'll just, well, just come over into our culture, see, and we'll... Then you'll have hit the mark, and then you then you can stop pressing because you'll have hit the mark. <clears throat> See, we went out. Um, we were in South Carolina, uh, Brother Luke's church, and we were fellowshipping with, with one of the young brothers who's a deacon, and um, get along really good with their family. And they had a few families over, and we were just having having a nice time. And they have this. They have uh, you know they're kind of country folk, and they're out there, um, you know, in the sticks of South Carolina, and. And they're on this, you know, kind of farm, and they've got this sheepdog. And they were kind of laughing because they were, they, they, you know, they were almost, they weren't taking bets because they, you know, but they were kind of like, because we don't do that. But it was like, you know, you know, but we say, of course, you know, how much you want to bet that, the, you know, the, the sheepdog nips Brother Trevor's heel t this time because this dog was notorious for, you know, for, for, cause that's what sheep dogs do. You know, they, they try to corral the sheep together by nipping at their heels, you know? So, so this dog just trying to fulfill its nature, apparently like it could be off at the front, you know, very, very front of the property, you know, a hundred yards from the, from the door. And they said, you know, and if you're walking in, you know, and you walk up the steps and, and, and turn and to go in the door, that dog will shoot from the, from the front of the property and and jump up onto that porch and nip your heel just as you're going in the door. They said, you won't know, you're like, the dog was nowhere near me. How did, and it'll come and it'll nip at your heel. And, and they were like, I, I bet, I bet brother, it's going to get Brother Trevor this time. And I thought, Lord, what am I going to do? If this dog nips at my heel, and it's Saturday, you know, and I'm preaching twice the next day. You know, if this dog nips at my heel, I'm going to kill their dog. And then I'm going to be preaching to them later. And I'm just not sure how that's going to go. So I really hope this dog doesn't nip me in the heel because I'll have to try, you know, to react, you know, differently than my nature disposes me to act. And it will certainly be a trial. So then they're like, well, let's take a walk, you know, down the country road. So we take a walk. Guess what? The dog comes. You know, so there's like a good 12, 14 of us, you know, just chatting and, and, you know, so my family's there and, and everybody's like, I don't, you know, I don't want this dog biting me. And I'm like, well, just stay in the middle, you know, cause that's what the dog wants. He wants everybody to stay in the middle of the pack, you know, just, just stay in the middle and you're fine according to this dog, you know? So, I mean, of course we're, we're like, I see you dog. Uh-huh. I'm watching you, dog. I mean, it's the most uncomfortable walk I've ever been on. We were just, you know, my whole family's just like, you know, we're, we're not petrified of this dog. You know, I guess we enjoyed the walk, but, you know, it was just like, it sure would have been better if the dog wasn't there. <clears throat> and isn't that what we try to do? So we try to nip at people's heels to get them in the pack. And that's what we try to get them to. We try to get them to this very, very low mark that is message culture. 
just here, get in my message culture and, and everything will be fine here. Just sit here. You see, isn't that just seeds of denomination right there? Just here, just we, we bring down the mark to where it's this message culture and try to get people into it by like, because we're message sheepdogs. So you have to first in your mind have set that mark very, very low. It's higher than that. It's higher than that. So what God wants to tell you today is he wants, he wants you to step up. He wants you to, to, to see that the mark is higher than you have been thinking it. And, and to not get complacent. To not sit here and, and stagnate because you, you've hit something. And if you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, church is like the same. Like we enjoy it. We have great music. And, but church has kind of been the same for me for the last, I don't know, three to five years. So I ask a question, when's the last time you pressed? When's the last time you really felt like you pressed? And if you haven't pressed, why haven't you pressed? It's not that I'm saying, church, start pressing. You know, you're, you're lazy. Quit, quit being lazy and press. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But I would ask you, if you feel like, well, it's been a long time since I really feel like I've pressed the mark. Why? It's because you brought the mark down and you feel like you arrived. But if you set that mark higher... You set the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It is a high calling that God has called you to. He didn't call you to a low calling. He values you much more than that. He called you to a high calling of the mark of the prize of the mark in, the, uh, uh, in Christ Jesus. It's a high calling. He's asked you to press. He's asked you to press because the mark is so high. So if you haven't pressed, I would say it's probably an indicator that you set the mark too low. Church set the mark high. He, he's, he's, he's so great. He's so big. He's so high. How do, how do, we, how do we, instead of, but, but, but instead of doing that, because we're concerned about other people, you know, and we want them, we begin to press the mark. We want them to press the mark, and that's, that's great. We want to fix other people's marks. You know, that's noble. That's noble. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do right now, so I can't say anything against it. <clears throat> but, but, but... <laughs> Where's this quote here? Ah, from sudden secret going away of the church. How, how, how could we help other people set their mark higher? Brother Branham says, it's not up to the Branham Tabernacle, neither is it up to any church. It's up to you as an individual to be ready at the coming of the Lord. You must be ready. I'll sweep my own steps. It's up to you to sweep your steps. Right. Leave mine alone. Me leave yours alone. You've got to make your garment ready. Now, if you think about this quote, you know, you would think, well, isn't that, I mean, it's like, hey, sweep your steps. No, don't you worry about my steps. You sweep your steps. I'm dealing with mine. You deal with your, you know, that seems kind of mean, doesn't it? Seems like we don't care about the, that person. You leave mine alone. I'll leave yours alone. Doesn't sound Christian, does it? But what happens? Let's, let's think about this, though. What happens if you begin to sweep your steps and you, you know, you get... You, just, you get that broom and you get to the front porch and you, you start sweeping it and you realize there's color there that you haven't seen in many years and that it's kind of nice. And you get the dirt, you know, off that top step. You see, the dirt comes from the ground and it comes up the steps. And, and you know, you can think about that as like coming through your heart and out, you know, onto the physical. Okay, so your first step, and you begin to sweep it, you know, and you get the DVDs that you shouldn't have, and you get the music that you shouldn't have, and, you know, you get the makeup, and you get the, the, the jewelry, and the, the, all of this, is and the, all of that, and you get it out. You sweep it off. All these things that, that affect, you know, that people could see. And you clean that step. And then you would go down to the next step, and you, you'd start cleaning that step. And, you know, you start getting bitterness and malice and jealousy and, you know, all these things that cause the problems up the step, you know, because you brought the, you bought the dirt from the, 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 the ground of your heart, you know, and you brought it up the steps till, to, to where it's manifested, you know, and, and so now you begin to get down a little bit deeper and that, that's where it gets a lot harder, sweeping that step. And then you would go even deeper and really get into it and the pride and arrogance and, you know, God should start showing you maybe you're not as great of a Christian as you really thought you were and, you know, maybe you need to get rid of that pride before I can actually use you. You know, and so you start sweeping that step. But, but you know, the problem is, is that when you begin to do that, see, there's, there's two, the reaction of, the, of two types that people can have. They can walk by your steps and go, my, look at those steps. Wait, look at mine. 
mine are, mine are dirty. But, you know, last week our steps looked the same. But now I see something going on here. Now there's two reactions. People are going to say, what do you think you're doing? Well, you think your steps are better than mine, don't you? Or the other thing they're going to do is like, those steps look good. What you been doing? Well, I've been sweeping them. I've been, you know, I've been really trying. I've been really, you know, striving. I've I've really been pressing. I realize that, that God wants more out of me and. And, and, and instead of them saying, like, what, what you, what you saying I'm not doing enough? It's like, man, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about you. I'm saying I strove and swept my steps because I realized my steps were dirty. Where in those sentences did you, did you hear that I thought your steps were dirty? I swept my steps... Because God showed me they were dirty. So instead of them, and, and you can't help that, you know, and so here's the thing is that like you're going you're gonna to suffer persecution when you sweep your steps. Who do you think you are? Oh, you think you're just some prayer warrior, don't you? Oh, my goodness. You think you're just, it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> just trying to do what God asked me to do. I'm trying to take it to another level. Oh, you're saying I'm not there? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. See, people begin to hear those things, you see. So you're going to suffer some persecution when you, and maybe that's the reason we don't do that, is because, again, we set the mark as the big happy family. We want the happy family. You know, pastor, don't preach, don't, don't preach so hard. You know, we got some people struggling with that, and we, we don't want to offend them. Well, I mean, I'm not for preaching hard just to, you know, push people out of the church, but, but the mark is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's not to just keep us all happy, and then hopefully by little, you know, however your church is going to grow, but the church should grow in grace and in holiness. Amen. So, so you sweep your steps, and then people get kind of offended. But, but the other, but the other reaction would be, those look lo- way better than my steps. Why? Well, I, I, I started sweeping, and I realized I had some things that were covering those steps. And when I, when I got the broom out and started doing it, I could see the color. Yeah. Honey, yeah, we got a broom. Yeah, give me that broom. Hey. That's amazing. I want my steps to look clean too. Sweep your steps. Other people catch the vision. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. Just sweep your steps. Just, you know, don't worry about everybody else. Press the mark, church. Don't worry about other people's marks. You set the mark high. They're going to recognize that guy is striving for perfection. He's aiming at something high. And I'm just sitting here going like, is there a target over there? Like... And they're going to go, well, maybe I should practice. Maybe I should try to strive. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I should put on a suit and a tie and, you know, and really press in. And no disregards to somebody who's not wearing a suit and tie. But I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, we, 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 we raise a standard in some way. Right. We step up in some way and we strive a little higher and we get a little higher into Christ. And then we keep pressing and we keep pressing. And it doesn't stop. But it's never tiring. Right. It's never depressing. It's actually the opposite of that. And our culture today would like to try to tell you that, that trying something and trying to do hard is, is boring and difficult and just stop because everybody will like you better anyway if you don't, you know, show them up. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to say show up a bunch of other Christians, All right. but I'm, but I'm going to show up for God. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. So let's get rid of this stuff in our lives. Let's press the mark. Let's see here. What have I not gone through in these notes? Yeah, praise the Lord. So what are some of the, what are some of the lies that you would tell yourself to say, well, I can't do that, Brother Trevor. I can't, you know, God could use other people, but he can't use me because that's maybe where some of you are at. And that's just, but that's just a lie. You know, you think about the Seventh Church Age Messenger, you know, Brother Branham, you know, born in a cabin in Kentucky to, you know, an alcoholic dad. 
well, what's his pedigree? What's his, what does he look at and say, you know, yeah, that's why God can use me because X. No, God can use me because he chose me. That's, that's why. What lie is it, you know? I mean, you think about Moses, you know. He tried and killed a man and epically failed. But God turned it around. What lie are you telling yourself? I'm not good enough. Well, God could God even use Samson. I'm not good enough. David fell and, and, and God, God still used him. Church, God wants to use you. Even you in your own peculiarities, your own uniqueness, your own faults. God still can use you in spite of all of those things and through all of those things and, and make you into something wonderful. His strength is perfected in your weakness. So don't lie to yourself. Don't feel like you've attained because Paul says, I, I don't count myself to, as, to have apprehended. Amen. Because you're a living instrumentality of God. Because you're the final voice to the final age under your messenger. Because you're the ones, not this church, but you as an individual, you as an individual are coming up to a place where you are the super race, the super church as you near him. Because you can be that spirit born, spirit filled man that takes the word of God into their heart and places it upon his lips in faith. Places it upon his lips. That's the same as deity speaking. It's a high calling. God don't just trust that to someone who hasn't pressed, who hasn't strove. You don't, you don't just get to get to, to clean your sin out of your life and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost and then think, my goodness sakes, I'm just going to speak and everything's going to go the way I say it. That's like, you know, becoming 15 years old and thinking, well, my goodness, I have my son of my dad and he's going to give me the keys to the car tomorrow because that's my 16th birthday and I'm going to drive all over this town. No, no, that ain't going to work well. He's going to take you to a big parking lot and then he's going to put it in park and get out, let you drive a little bit in a parking lot where you can't hit nothing. And then you're going to strive and practice and get better. And maybe at some point in time, he's going to allow you to get onto the interstate. And that first time you get on the interstate, man, that's going to be some kind of scary. You're going to be like, these cars are going too fast. And it's like, I thought you were just thinking like, I'm just going to become this, this awesome driver on day one. No, but you kept pressing. You kept striving. You kept going through the fears and through the pains and through the hurts and through, but, but through all of the successes, you've grown and you've come so far. Keep pressing, church. Don't let the mark come down. Set the mark high, the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's the worst thing you can do and the most offensive thing you can really kind of do to Christ is to bring that mark down. Keep it high. Recognize I'm striving to serve you, God. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're worth pressing for. You're worth giving everything for. Yes, sir. And then God can use you. God can fill you. Brother Branham says in the message, beyond the curtain of time, musicians can come. Each one of us play a part in this picture and in this song. We are parts of the kingdom of God, and that is that we can play our parts. As long as we realize where we are posi positionally, belong in this place, and then stay right there in that place. And one place we know it's in love because that's what makes up the picture. I just love how this, how he lays this quote out that it's so artistic and beautiful. Like each one of us play a part in the picture and in the song. You got a choir, each one of you's playing a part in that song. You paint a picture, each little, you know, maybe make it into a puzzle. Each little piece goes in a specific place. And that's you. You are a specific place. And God wants to use you and make you the best Whatever that place is that you could ever be. And that'll fill you with the most value you'll ever have in your entire life, I guarantee you. But you have a part. God wants to use you. Maybe you think you're insignificant and you think, well, what can I do? Well, start pressing. And God will show you. Start asking God. Get, get down to business with God. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to just, just like, well, I'm a, I'm a believer, so yay. 
no, don't don't stop. That's 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 just that's what the denominations do. You know, get get to our get get to our church culture, and then wait for God to come back and bring you to heaven, and then otherwise go live however you want. Like, that, that's why I'm saying he's a personal God. Like, he is you know. It's a marriage. It's a love relationship. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't get married and then just be like, "Well, we're married now. Good, good deal, good." You know, we 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 come back to the same house, but we live two separate lives. Like, but that's not a marriage. That's not love. Who wants that? No one. Why would you want that with God? Just say, "Well, we come to the same house on the, on Sunday," but otherwise, you know, we we acknowledge that we'll be there together, but. No, he's a personal God. He wants, he wants all of you. He wants you to have all of him. He wants there to be this wonderful walk together. Press the mark, church. Press the mark. Let him be personal to you. Let him be personal. Let him call you higher. Let him get, get closer to him. Let him get closer to you. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful relationship, and it, it provides so much meaning and so much value. But only if you keep the mark high. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you're so good to us. I pray that, Lord, we would, we would continually press the mark, that we would keep it high, Lord Jesus, and recognize, Father, that there's so much value in you. Oh, that we could strive every day of our lives and never attain, and how wonderful that would even be, Father. Lord, it's, it's great, Lord, to serve you, to grow in you, to value you and see that you value us all, oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. I, I just pray, Lord, that you'd quicken these things to the hearts of the people, Lord, and quicken it to my heart, Lord. May we wake up every day keeping that mark high with a joy to serve you and press in, Lord. I ask that you'd be with us now, strengthen our hearts by your word and your spirit, Lord. We ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Certainly good to be with you. Wish we could stay longer, but, but headed, headed back tomorrow. Too, too quick of a trip for me to be here in Florida, I tell you. But, but we were just trying to just be here because of the, the ending of the mission trip there in Beckway. And, and so glad that we could be a part of your, your Sunday today. Amen. God bless you.
If we can do that, I can guarantee you this, we will never find ourselves getting complacent when it comes to the things of God. I think that's one of the biggest things that we have to battle because Satan loves to, oh, you did this, you did that. And sometimes we, we put God on a scale. <laughs> we, we say, Lord, I did this much for you, and, you know, and, 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 and I read my Bible, and I prayed, and I this, and I that. And we feel like this scale going up, and this is going down, so it just feels so good. Then all of a sudden, you just put something on this side, and it causes this to come right back down again. And God's always on this scale. God don't want to be on the scale. He wants you to, he wants to be first place in your life every day, every minute, every hour, every day. I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm pressing towards the mark. Even as I go into this next year, I'm pressing towards the mark. Not looking at all the things that maybe we did in 2019. It's like I ain't done nothing. I'm starting all over again. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our life. Everything we can give. And I just love the statement uh, that Brother Trevor made, and I think it's something that we should just meditate on. It's not a dangling carrot in front of you, but he says, um, the closer you get to him, the more of him you find to get. The closer you get to him,
next verse. Oh, come on. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes. Lord, you can use them as you please. I have emptied out my cup. So that you could fill me up And now I'm free And I just want to be more available to you Oh, Lord I'm available to you So use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say, oh, my story is empty. Oh, and I am available. Send my story. Yes, it is. And I am available. God, my storage is empty. Yes, and I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available. My storage. it is, and I am, I'm available, hey, my storage is empty, yes, it is, and I am, yes, I am, yes, I am, my storage, oh, God, is empty, yeah. and I am available, one more time, to you. God, I'm available to you, Jesus. I'm available to you, God. Want to be used by you, Lord Jesus. Want to be used by you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I empty out today, God, to be used by you. Fill me, Lord God, as I empty out, Lord Jesus. Use me for your glory. Use me for your honor, Father. Wherever I go, my job, my school, wherever I go, God, use me for your glory. Hallelujah. My storage is empty. And I am available. Hey, my storage is empty. God, I am available. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. Somebody worship him. Worship him with all of your heart. Oh, God. Father, don't let us just come into this building to hear a word like this that you've placed in your servant's heart, Father, to speak to us. Don't let it just go in one ear and out the other, Father, but may we all put it in action. Lord, if a, if a man like Paul that has been used so mightily by you, God, church is quoting his, his writings every every Sunday, Father. People studying everything that he had to say, but he would write count 
allowed myself to have apprehended. I haven't, haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. Lord, I'm just even reminded of even your prophet, Lord, how he came to the earth, Lord, and he, and he said that uh, he would serve you so much. God, even if at the end, you were to tell him that he didn't do enough and to, to, that he was going to have to go and, 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 and go to hell. Father, he said he would still keep serving you. God, what a conviction to have. What a mark to set. Because this life that we're living and serving you is the best life that anybody could ever live. God, how could we say we're bored? How, we can, how can we say there's not enough to do, Father? So many souls are dying without knowing Christ. God, give us a burden for lost souls. Give us a genuine burden, God, to serve you and to... God, to just do everything we can for the kingdom of God. Not just what we do in church, God, but what happens after we leave this place. Thank you for your servant, Lord, that would just come and encourage our hearts today with this word. We pray your blessings upon him. As Brother Stephen prepares to leave to, to go back home tonight, Lord, we pray your blessings upon him. Thank you for allowing him just to pass through and encourage our hearts with this with his testimonies, Lord, that he shared. God, what, a, what an encouragement, Jesus. We just appreciate, Lord, this day that you've given us. Bless the saints, God, as we leave this place, but not your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time tonight for communion and feet washing, God, as we come, Lord, to honor you, Father, in that, in that way. We pray that you be with us. Bless us now, God, as we leave this place, but not your presence. Keep us in that tender care. Saints that are traveling, God, and away for the holidays, Lord, give them travel the mercies as they press their way back home, Father. God, we commit each one into your capable hands. It's in the name of the Lord Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord another hand of praise? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, brothers will come at this time, amen, to dismiss you. We'll be back tonight at 530 for our communion and feet washing service. 5.30 tonight. God bless you.